How would you actually describe the film to somebody who knows nothing about it but knows about it? It isn't rock fantasy. I think the main thing was to get over the fact that it just wasn't a film of a concert. I mean, there's been lots of sort of, well, not lots, but there's been quite a few films that have just been of concerts on the stage, and we wanted to get beyond that. Yeah, if we're going to be self-indulgent, we might as well try and expand our indulgence a little bit, you know? I mean, the self-indulgence being the fantasy sections. Uh, were you each individually in charge of your own sequence of fantasy? Were you totally in charge? It had to be total control because really you worked out, a, um, or you planned out how you would like, to, in my own case, how I really saw uh, what I was doing on a, you know, on a, just a, on a on another level altogether, you know, the journey, the fact that there are pitfalls and there are um, trials, tribulations, and elations, and the end should never ever be in sight. So they were entirely the own, uh, you know, their own individual ideas. For instance, with Robert, like when Robert who did his stuff in Wales, uh, the other members of the group were not there, you know? And, the same and refused Jimmy. to pay for it at all. And uh, well, we have plans for that later, actually. Wait till he sees his next royalty statement. Oh, I forgot he doesn't get me. Sorry. How did you work with the director? Presumably, you you had a lot of ideas. Obviously, you did in your fantasy sequences. Presumably, you did for for the mu for the stuff on stage. How did you actually work with him? How much were you in charge, and how much was he in charge, or was it a cooperative? They were totally in charge. Uh, the artistic thing of how Robert wanted, or Jimmy. Paul Jones, or John Bonham wanted to see. They had a picture in their mind of what they wanted to see. That was a matter of having the director shoot what was in their mind, you know? Did you being a crafts and technician, mechanic, whatever you'd like to say. And then it was up to... Well, so long as he did that, then it was up to us afterwards to, to sort of get together and correlate with him and say, right, now this is, this is the... This should be illuminated. Now, this is where you've got to really pull, you know, this is where you've got to do your stuff, you know, because we know exactly what part, of having lived with it forever and, and, and conceived it, we know exactly what parts need highlighting. And, and, uh, and he was, in a way, working somewhat in the dark, although he could see that there was a picture and there was substance there, you know. I mean, we knew what parts had to be highlighted. And, and so we had to work constantly. Did you script it? Him, or no. did you do oh, it by no. word of mouth? I mean, did you sort of discuss and say, well, we'll do this? No, it all started in the Sheraton Hotel in Boston. And uh, everybody's sitting around talking about a film which we talked about for some time. A group had talked about it. And somebody said, why don't we make a film, G? So I said, yeah, that's an idea. Picked the phone up, called <coughs> London and... Uh, Rented the sharks? Yes, and over they came. It was just like that. You know, it was straight in at the deep end, really. But it worked. I think it worked very well. I liked the film very much. I, I, the one section that I had a slight reservation about uh, was the theft from the hotel sequence, which somehow seemed to, to lift it out of a, a rock concert and a fantasy combination into a, a sort of documentary. But I suppose, in a way, maybe the, doc, the rock concert was a documentary and that it happened all on the one day. Well, the, the, the robbery scene could have been a lot heavier, but uh, uh, it could have been a lot heavier, yeah. Been another dollar in the same right, yeah. <laughs> could have been a lot less robbed. No, uh, the thing is that the robbery <laughs> did happen at the time of the concert, it was a part of that that time, that capture, whatever you like to call it, and that's why we just folded it in gently. It's, just, it's, not, it's not very blatant. I mean, did you find it blatant? Uh, well, you see, I, I did actually find it rather blatant, but not only did I find it slightly away from the feeling of the rest of the film, but it was also in black and white, which accentuated its difference. Yes, but it was newsreel, it was actual which, Yeah, it, TV it was, newsreel. but somehow, I, I don't know, it just seemed to me like a wart. I tell you what, if you walk off stage and find out that $203,000 are going to be spared... If I walk up off stage and be, have that, I should just be happy. It'd be pretty relevant, but... <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was it, it was a day in July, really. Yeah. You just, in fact, that we tried to find a title that would signify the fact that it was That's just right, that, wouldn't yeah, it, you know? Yeah. A day in July might have been a good title, a bit late in the day to change it. Robert, why did you make the film in the first place? Well, I wouldn't like to think that vanity crept in, but uh, it's, it's rather frustrating spending 
uh, Neville and Nancy Tobin about eight and a half years of playing on stage. And uh, I think the closest we've ever got of seeing ourselves is having a sly peep at the video screen at Earl's Court. You know? So initially, if it ran to know more than just, you know, turning ourselves on, or at least having a look to see what people came for, you know? That was the initial, uh, you know, idea. And from, and from there on, we just wanted to capture one, one moment in time, you know? I mean, it was... Now, it's got to the point it was a while back. You know, the time may come again when we reach a point that we say, right, you know? Let's capture, let's have a go at this one, let's see how this looks, you know? It's ironical to me as a television producer that it's taken an extract from a commercial cinema film to bring Led Zeppelin back in performance state, back in on to the small screen. What, you obviously have persevered with a positive line of not appearing on television anywhere in the world, I believe. Why have you, do, why have you particularly done that? Well, it's the only way we could line you up to get any decent time on Old Grey, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, do you feel that television is, is too limited? In, yes. In, in what area? Well, particularly in sound. With respect, I don't think they have the facilities to record the sound. And in some way, you just cannot capture the magic of Zeppelin. Magic is a much banded word, I know, but you just, you just can't. That's why I've always been against doing it. I say television loudspeakers do have certain limitations. Yeah. To me, to put it in words, I, I don't know, but it's, I just don't see it working. It, well, it doesn't work for Led Zeppelin. Well, obviously, the, the major uh, problem for a band is sound, of course it is. Yeah. What, what, but what I can you... give you an example in Earl's Court. If any people saw Earl's Court, went to the people that went to Earl's Court was around um, what 90 odd thousand. Yeah. You know, now then, <clears throat> I think it worked really well myself, the big screen at the back. It looked super. You know, people got really close up things. Now I have that whole thing on cassette. And I put it on a 25 inch screen at home. Nothing. It doesn't work. What have you done about the cinemas you're going into? Have you, have you done anything especially about the sound there? Oh, uh, you've been very careful on the cinemas. I think there are certain cinemas that can accommodate the, you know, the four-track stereo that, that the film is uh, presented in initially. And um, I should imagine that other cinemas in uh, strategic points can be equipped with, with the right equipment so oh, that yes. we, can, we can really get, yeah. you know, we can do exactly yeah. what we started out doing, you know? Yeah. Well, to take it that distributors fall in love with and push it up and down the country all over the place, will this affect live gigs and touring? No, no way. I mean, you would currently tour at the same time as the, as the film is showing? Well, not immediately it comes out. No, but I mean, if it was still showing around the country, <laughs> you, that wouldn't influence I mean, you. We'll find John Paul Jones in time, you know, maybe. Well, thanks very much for coming along and chatting to us. Uh, uh, maybe great. in five years' time, we'll see it bought up in a package shown on BBC as well, a television special. Actually, I didn't let them have the television rights. Curses. <laughs>